G7 leaders and the leaders of the EU, NATO, and the UN all agreed that we will stand united in our approach to the Taliban. We agreed the legitimacy of any future government depends on the approach it now takes to uphold international obligations. President Biden insisting, <clears throat> excuse me, President Biden is insisting G7 world leaders are on the same page when it comes to Afghanistan, despite rejecting their pleas to keep troops on the ground beyond August 31st. We all know that's not true. Our next guest says this is no way to handle allies, British author Douglas Murray. Uh, Douglas, this is ridiculous. No one's buying it. The G7 does not agree with what the president's doing. What's he thinking? No, that's right. Uh, Biden has gone to America's allies after making his own decision. It's uh, shutting the door after the horse has bolted. He didn't consult America's allies. Uh, he's spoken to them after America, uh, uh, under the Biden presidency, made this catastrophic decision. So there are a lot of people uh, among American allies who are very sore about this. Britain and the EU have the same view on this, that America should not have withdrawn at this speed. It should have consulted its allies. It should not be regarding this departure from Afghanistan, this rushed departure after two decades in the country, right. as being the unqualified success that the White House seems to think it is. Well, Douglas, uh, apparently Boris Johnson has spoken uh, to his advisors, and it sounds like everybody at the G7 was trying to talk Biden out of it, but Biden was, you know, adamant, you know, that's going to be the date. My advisors say that's going to be the date. I'm going to follow through with it. And now it sounds like the British may actually pull out the day before, next Wednesday, a week from today, or rather uh, on Monday, uh, before the United States. Uh, Britain believes it, ca it cannot hold Kabul airport on its own. It cannot do it without the United States. Uh, the foreign secretary in the United Kingdom have e has even suggested that after the withdrawal, it's possible that Kabul airport will have to be run by Turkey. Uh, it is extraordinary. After 20 years of sacrifice by Britain and America and her allies, her NATO allies, we then hand over Kabul airport to Turkey, having handed over Afghanistan to the Taliban. You know, I come back to this thing. The White House press secretary told Fox News' White House correspondent yesterday that this was nothing but a success, this pullout. <laughs> right. This is yeah. one of the greatest pullouts in history. History, one of the fastest pullouts. Uh, it is so contemptible to look at it in this light. Yeah, it, and Britain and other allies of America certainly don't regard this as a success. They see it as America rushing out of Afghanistan in this incredibly ignominious fashion, handing the country over to the Taliban. And, and, and anyone who sees this as some kind of diplomatic triumph is absolutely in la-la land. Biden said that America was back when he came in as president. He has ignored America's allies. He's handing over Kabul airport to the Taliban, like the rest of Afghanistan, and his allies are left trying to mop up uh, the pieces afterwards. This is not America extending its influence in the world. This is America running fast from an engagement that's been 20 years and behaving as if it's got an essay crisis at the last moment. It is so sad for America's allies to see this, and the reverberations from this are going to go on for a very, very long time to come. And it is so sad for Americans to watch this all unfold, too, hearing the stories. Tucker Carlson sat down with Eric Prince. He's the founder of Blackwater, and he said the Taliban takeover will destroy what is left of NATO. Listen. This will destroy what's, what's left of NATO, because the U.S. has been so unilateral and so clueless that... I mean, for, for the President of the United States to be rebuked in the House of Parliament, that's the first time it's ever happened. Um, so we have shattered the confidence of our European allies and every other ally around the world. It will definitely figure into people's thinking how quickly America abandoned its friends in Afghanistan and left in such a horribly chaotic and clumsy manner. He's a retired Navy SEAL. Do you agree that this will destroy NATO? 
Well, it's definitely put NATO under unbelievable tension. Uh, NATO went into Afghanistan with America under the under the Article 5, all for, one for all, all for one idea. America had been attacked on 9-11, and her allies came in to support it. Now we see NATO having been abandoned by the U.S., having gone into Afghanistan on behalf of the U.S., at the request of the U.S. That's why former Prime Minister Tony Blair said this week the decision is imbecilic. No question, and that was being kind. It's a joke. Now we're going to ask for NATO to help us with China. Uh, when Taiwan gets invaded, we're going to need the world united behind us. Forget it. Uh, Douglas, it's impossible to quantify the amount of damage done to our allies, let alone uh, how our enemies are heartened. Uh, you are on Tucker Carlson today uh, in an extended interview. He doesn't roll commercials, so we'll get to hear you speak in great detail uh, about this Afghanistan disaster. It's available beginning today at 4 o'clock. And that's when you can see Eric Prince of Blackwater. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Douglas. Thank you.